Hey everyone, today we're continuing with our TypeScript REST API. We're going to be improving the request validation. So just to show you what this looks like today, I'm going to run the application and I'm going to make a request, but this request isn't going to include a first name. So this is should be a bad request. What's actually happening is we're returning this 500 internal server error and this error is being bubbled up from where we're trying to save it into the database. So we aren't catching that this is a bad request early on. We're actually letting this follow through the whole way to trying to save it, and then it's failing at that point. So looking in our code here, we can see that it's actually saving here. It's actually throwing this error here at this point where we're trying to save it. Whereas we should be catching this error much earlier. We shouldn't be letting it even go into this function. So we're going to be using an NPM package called Express Validator to do this. Um, they have really good documentation. You can see here, this is kind of the before what's happening, where we're actually going to try to save this entity. And then the after, we're able to basically validate requests. We can look in the body. Uh, we can also look in request parameters and we can validate that they meet these constraints. And if they don't, then we're going to return the error to the user. And the error will look like this, which is much nicer than this error, which has just been thrown from the database itself. Cool. So the first thing we need to do is install that dependency. So it's called express validator. Now that that's installed, we're ready to add some validation. So for us, this is going to be a little bit more complicated than in the example, because if you remember, we're kind of handling all of our writes here in this generic way. And we're writing our routes here, just in this file. So it makes sense for validation to be associated with each individual route. So we should add our validation here at this point. So first of all, for a get, I guess we, we don't really need any validation whenever we're getting all users, because we aren't really sending anything with this request. So we can just put validation and we'll just make it an empty array. Okay, so whenever we're getting an individual user, we want to be passing in an ID, which is an integer. So this is just an integer like one, two, three, four. So we want to be able to validate that this param they're sending is actually an integer. Uh, so let's just start this again and let's see what happens. So if I start this, and I try to do a get with users and I do ABC, uh, we actually get this error which says it's invalid syntax, which is, isn't too bad, but again, we should be sending back that it's a bad request. Conversely, if I send just an integer, we can see that we get 200 okay. And this is kind of weird as well because I guess there isn't actually a user with this ID, so it should be a 404. So let's try to handle all of these different weird edge cases. So the first one we're going to focus on is this ABC. So in order to counteract this, um, whenever we're getting a user with a specific ID, we should add some validation here. Again, it's going to be an array. The only validation we're going to need here should be param. We can see we're going to import this from Express Validator. And param, we're checking ID, which matches here with this ID. And we're going to check that it is an int. And you can see here all of these different um, kind of validators we get from Express Validator. So we're going to use is int like that. Cool. So let's continue on and add all of our validation first. And then we're going to use this validation here where we're managing our routes. Because right now we're just adding the validation here, but this actually isn't being used anywhere yet. So next up is this interesting one, whenever we want to create a user. So we're going to add validation here. It's going to be an array. And this time we're going to be checking the body. So we can do body. If you remember, we have first name. And this should be a string. We didn't import body yet, so let's do that. And this should be dot is string. And let's just copy this and use the same thing for last name. 
and then the last thing we want to check for is age and this is going to be is int again this time we can add something um, a little bit more specific here so we can check that it's an integer we can also check that it's a minimum of zero so we shouldn't have any negative numbers here so that is that I think the last thing we need then is just for delete so again let's just validate that this ID is an integer so now that we have this validation field for every single route we have here we're going to go back here into index.ts and we're going to use this validation as a middleware so right now here you can see we're iterating through all of our routes and then we're just managing um, this here so what we actually want to do here is add this as a middleware so let's go here and in the middleware we're just going to say route dot and here we can see we have this validation and here you can see we're using this spread operator because this is an array and we want to basically go over each of these validations like this cool so now that we've added that validation we aren't actually doing anything with the result yet so we should actually be able to use this so we can copy and paste this exact bit and it's going to go just inside the try block here and we need to import validation result so let's see okay it started now that's good let's just talk through what we're doing here so for each route we're using the spread operator we're going over each validation here and then inside here we're checking if there's any errors as a result of those validations and if there is an error we're going to return 400 and we're going to return um, the errors here like this so let's test this out first of all we had this get abc before we were getting this error and now we're getting 400 and you can see we're getting this much nicer error here which is saying that it's a, an invalid value and we have this 400 bad request status so let's try to post now a user that doesn't have a first name we can see we have this invalid value first name body let's just add a first name now and send this and we should get it created that's good and let's just add an age of minus 20 and this time we can see we have this invalid value so this is nice but the the message actually isn't that good for the user it doesn't really tell them so much about what was wrong so let's see if we can improve that a little bit so in the documentation we can see there's custom error messages here and it's just a case of adding this with message method so let's use this here here on age let's say with message must be positive integer and let's save so now if we try to make the same request we see we get this message must be positive integer and we could even just say age must be a positive integer and if we try to make the request again age must be a positive integer cool so that's some greatly improved request validation thanks for watching and i'll see you next time